Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you from the Democratic National Convention, I'll be your host, Dave Trumbor. <laughs> Joining me as always, my co-host, my co-host and recently announced candidate for the U.S. presidency, Sean Paul Ellis. How are you doing tonight, sir? David, 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 I'm doing well. How about yourself? He's got his presidential voice on tonight. I want to talk to you about, I mean, this is big news, buddy. You know, this is. You know, D.C. area improv artist, comedian, stepping up to pod, podcast host, and now running for president. But I feel like you want to tell the people something. You're not just running for a regular presidency, right? You no, something I'm not. to offer. Well, I feel that yeah. this is the season where so many people at this point have thrown their hats into the ring. You know, we have, uh, is it yesterday, two days ago, Bernie Sanders uh, throws his hat into running for the Democrats alongside of uh, Hillary Clinton. Right. Uh, we have close to about uh, a dozen people who are running on the Republican ticket. Right. I realized what's going on is, A, I don't believe I'm of age to be president yet. Okay, fair. So Don't let that stop you, though. So I'm not, okay, good. which is why I would like to announce my candidacy uh-huh. for super president. <laughs> super presidency. Super presidency. I can promise so many super things, yeah, like and I am very excited. Well, I don't want to ruin it. Oh, okay. Flying cars. Oh, you did? Okay, there it was. I thought you were going to hold on to that for a while, but flying cars, everybody. No, 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 let's get right into it. You know, I am, I've listened to what people want, Mm -hmm. and people are very emphatic about supercars. David, I don't know if you're aware, people watched a little movie called Back to the Future, Mm -hmm. and Back to the Future 2, and they saw hoverboards. They did. And we have we have been complaining about (laughs) hoverboards and the lack of hoverboard technology for years so i'm just gonna usurp and go right past that pass go i don't even want to collect 200 dollars. we're going right to cars baby right to cars right to i'm Omni- excited supercars right to cars super flying cars supercars look buddy you i mean you're running for the super presidency so obviously already you got my vote and super flying cars i'm, I'm done because we've been waiting for these for like what 80 years now 80 years or more i mean i know you've been alive that long yeah. i haven't yeah which is why I'm not eligible for running for regular oh, presidency. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're correct. You know, you've been waiting for it for, for 80 years. Look, I'm just, I, I've been waiting for change. I've been driving the same old bound to the ground car, you know, <laughs> driven by gravity for decades upon decades now. I'm, I'm tired. I want to start flying. And I think the people of America, Nate, the world, are competent enough in their driving abilities to just launch those fuckers right into the sky. I think we're ready. And I think well, you I, can bring it home, buddy. I think, I think the important thing is that together as a country, we can take to the skies. I like that. You, you need to put that on some sort of uh, propaganda. <laughs> propaganda is the word I want there, right? Propaganda is 100% what I thought this cartoon was about. <laughs> I did too. I really did. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a very like, patriotic. You can't even tell where the hell this thing takes place. Uh, so, of course, we're talking Super President, ladies and gentlemen. This is an actual cartoon that exists. Uh, yeah, it was from. We'll get into the history in a second. But yeah, it is an actual thing that exists. Um, and it's completely ridiculous, but also fantastic. I, I honestly wish that we had come up with this idea ourselves. It sounds like we did. Because it's so wonderful. <laughs> That's not it's the word I was going to so, use, but yeah, it sounds it's like so something we would have wonderful. Made up. Yeah. I had no idea that this existed. No. I in the the zeitgeist that is this current election season, it feels like Super President is prime for a reboot. I mean, it <laughs> Honestly, I feel like you'd get more people to vote for super president <laughs> than you would for any actual candidate these days. And honestly, we've been doing it the old-fashioned way for hundreds of years now, so I think it's time for a super president. I think your, your time is right. I, I feel that it is. Time is prime. I'm, I'm looking forward to taking this under... I, I want this undertaking. I want to be able to, to nestle the American <laughs> people close to my bosom. Oh, boy. And, and reap the benefit of my superness. <laughs> this, is a re- this is painting a really strange picture for me right now. 
Is it is it that weird? Is it that weird to have me just shirtless cuddling people to my chest? I don't think so. And telling them that they got a brand new supercar. No. No. I mean that's fantastic. They don't even have to go on Oprah for that. You just one up to Oprah, sir. <laughs> Take that. You get it. You get a supercar. You get a supercar. <laughs> you get a supercar. Ah, I love your vision of a future America slash whatever country this is supposed to be. I want to say that this took place in America. It had to have taken place it, in America. I mean, but there are other presidents around the world. Uh, I don't know. You'd imagine it's America. We'll get into I mean, I, the, I the reason America. why we can't quite figure out whether this is America or There's not. A, <laughs> there are some challenges uh, with being able to determine the location, but let's let's get into it yeah let's jump into this so we will talk about the history briefly i'll give you kind of a rundown uh, again to remind you that yes this is a show that existed we did not make this up so here it goes super president was an american animated cartoon aired saturday mornings on nbc from september of 1967 to december of 1968 the series was produced by the uh, the very well known i kid because i've never heard of these people before <laughs> de patty freeling animation company i guess uh, a total of 30 episodes were produced, but the show was canceled midway through its second season. Um, this was kind of an interesting one because it, it's sort of like the ones we talked about, the, the old Hanna-Barbera shows from the 60s and 70s where they had the shorter segments and they had multiple ones in a half-hour block. So Super President actually had two six-minute, six to seven-minute episodes in each half-hour block, and then they also had an episode of another show called Spy Shadow. And that's uh, sort of a secret agent show. We won't get into that one too much today, but we might save that, put it in our back pocket for a, uh, a future episode because Super President was good enough for its own episode. So uh, that's really it. I couldn't find too much of the history on it. You know, there were some, some things on Wikipedia that weren't really founded or cited well that said because people were so offended by the idea of like a super powered, all powerful, basically Superman as president. Uh, that that was the reason that the show was uh, canceled and shut down. But I didn't find anything substantiating that. So uh, maybe it's just because the show was really bad. Um, I think some people have a difference of opinion on that, maybe like Sean. Um, well, you know, David, yeah. I'm going to say not everybody in 1967 and 68 can handle <laughs> the idea of the <laughs> ultimate responsibility of becoming super president. True. President is hard enough to grasp, especially since this one came out, I think, just after the death of Kennedy, if I've got my time. I right. thought he. I thought he died. I thought he passed away in '69. Mm, okay, yeah, I was reading a review from it, so maybe they had their years off a little bit. But so Kennedy would have been um, during this run, which you can. We'll get into the character in a bit, but it's basically kind of modeled after a generic president, but definitely with Kennedy in mind. So it would have been during his run. Yeah. So. I mean, do you, do you think that it's just that people... I, I'm curious why, why people wouldn't like the idea. <laughs> I don't know. I think part of it was because this was when the, the comics were starting to kind of make their way onto the animation front. You know, Batman uh, with, with um, Adam West and Burt Ward were already on the, the live-action TV show. That was doing just fine. Everything else kind of flopped when they tried live-action stuff, but the cartoons were obviously doing just fine. Plenty of stuff. Fantastic Four was on around this time. A lot of Marvel and DC adaptations. This one was just, like I said, DePatty Freeling Animation Company. Who the hell? Like, they just tried to come up with their own thing to kind of rip off the, the superhero genre. And they decided to mash up the superheroes with the president. And I am, I am so glad that they did. Right. Yeah. I also want to fact check myself and note that JFK uh, passed away. On November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. I'm an idiot. Oh, that's fine. You then should. Well, you then should I'm equally never, wrong because the show was well after his death. <laughs> you should never, <laughs> ever ask anything about U.S. history to me because I am going to admit I do not know. Guys, he's brushing up on his historical facts and figures for the debates, the super debates. Oh, so boy. don't worry about it. He'll be super prepared for the super debates. Uh, it's gonna be good. These super debates are gonna be great. The I'm worst part was uh, that means Lyndon Baines Johnson was president during Super President, which is about that's right. That's right. <laughs> how could again to your point? How could people not want to love this president more than their actual one? <laughs> than their actual oh, president? Oh boy, he seemed like the president that the people would want at that time. Yeah, a cartoon character, and the and the 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 president they deserved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seemed like the president they deserved. It this is, is this is challenging, but mm -hmm. let's let's talk a little bit about this president. Yeah, after you. Um, 
He is American president. Oh. Still slightly debatable. Right. James Jimmy or Jim <laughs> Norcross, who is voiced by Paul Freeze. If you don't know who Paul Freeze is, shame on you. Because let's find out together. Because I, I didn't know who he was. I was going to say as I until right I watched this <laughs> link and open this page. No, no, no. I, I'm not. I actually I didn't know this. He is most. He is the best well known for being the voice of Boris Badenoff and Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh. He was very early. He was a pioneer in uh, voice acting. In this country, he was known as the man of a thousand voices. Excellent. And so this is this is actually very cool to to see some of the the work of this man because I think this is the first time that we've ever had a cartoon with Paul Freeze. Yeah, I in think it. so, especially because we haven't talked Rocky and Bullwinkle because that's obviously a, a huge um, right a huge one. It's interesting. I know that I don't know that it was on Super President, but maybe in Spy Shadow, June Foray or June Foray. Um, did a lot of the voices too, but they didn't use her quite as much because they didn't really have too many female characters. Ah, because she was a woman. Exactly in the sixties. <laughs> Let's. This is yeah, a madman here. So, yeah, this is uh, this is just sad history that we've had to deal with, uh, which is awful. Because uh, I, I have not seen this spy cartoon. I, I like reading about Spy Shadow. Yeah. Sounds amazing yeah. and makes me want to just watch it immediately. And then, just real quick, she actually voiced um, Rocky. So there was that kind of connection. She voiced Rocky oh. the Flying Squirrel. That's kind of what she Fantastic. was famously known for. But yeah, back to Super President. So we have American President Jame Norcross is given superpowers as a result of a cosmic storm. Sure. Classic, classic president story. Never shown on screen, but that's fine. We'll believe it. <laughs> the president now has increased strength and metamorpho-like abilities that allow him to change his molecular composition <laughs> at will to any form required, <laughs> which is, if this sounds too good to be true, it really is the deus ex machina yeah. of this show. Yeah. It's pretty much <laughs> anything he can think of, any words that he knows, he can change into that thing. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Which has hilarious results. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, honestly, it's fantastic. It's pretty good. <laughs> A hidden panel in the Oval Office allows him to access... Uh, his secret base, a hidden cave beneath the presidential mansion. Oh, I love it. I can't which, wait till you live there and I can come visit you. Oh, this presidential mansion. Because honestly, Hillary is going to be in the White House next year. Yeah. And so I'm not going to want to impede on her space. No. I'm going to want to take up residency in the presidential mansion. And you're going to want to supersede her. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, thank you. Super President travels either by using his futuristic <laughs> automobile aircraft submarine called the Omnicar uh, or jets that are built in conveniently to his belt. <laughs> yeah, he can't That's fly by... on his own, which I found. We can talk about his powers in a little bit. He can't fly on his own, even though he can turn into, like, I don't know, helium, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get into that. Uh, I, a lot of this show, I, David. Yes. A lot of the show, I really began... T- to question how much I overthink some of the cartoons that we watch. Yes. And I, I lowered my bar or need, my threshold. You need to lower your barriers <laughs> for this one. <laughs> In terms of the sarcasm and wit that I throw at these, these episodes. It was so, so I, I, innocent, and that's what was so like endearing about it, is just that it the really things was. that they say, they really don't mean them in any different way than just like the the bland delivery that they give it but it makes it so damn funny and i've got i've got a bunch of pool quotes that i've got but we will also talk about some of the animation of uh some of the villainous characters and their look (laughs) because oh boy it is straight out of the 60s yeah they're great so despite the fact that the character's name is super president Mm -hmm. for some reason only norcross's chubby pipe smoking advisor jerry sales jerry sales knows that the leader of the free world is also the red and white costume superhero in his off hours. Yeah. Uh, so I want to say <laughs> Jerry Sales, I'm going to go on record right now. Yeah. Jerry Sales rules. You Jerry, say Jerry Sales, Sales rules. Jerry Sales is the fucking best. Let me, they, okay. He, he has, you, you assume that he is a top advisor or a chief advisor. Mm-hmm. To the president, yeah. or that he has some, he has some function. 
No, he's just there to chill. <laughs> he's just there to smoke he's his pipe there. and hang out. <laughs> he's there to chill, drive the Omnicar, Some, get kidnapped. Get kidnapped. Okay, so here I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three names. All right, I want you to rank them in order of. Let's do it. Just whatever, whatever you even want to rank them in. I don't even care. Kill, kill, well, kill Mary, fuck them. <laughs> okay, that'll work. This will be great. <laughs> uh, Lois Lane. Okay. Mary Jane Watson. Jerry Sales. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, kill Lois Lane. Oh my God. Okay, this is fun. Uh, fuck Mary J. Watson. That's a smart man. Mary Jerry. You gotta marry sales. Jerry. You Mary gotta marry Jerry. Jerry. He is gonna you be marry by Jerry. your side for life. That's what, that's what you want. That's what you want. Commitment. Oh. From Jerry Sales. Yes, he's gonna have lung cancer and probably throat cancer and probably lip <laughs> cancer in a few short years. His unfiltered pipe tobacco. But I mean. You know, for those few short years you get with him, they're going to be good, solid, solid time together. He'll probably I, get kidnapped every half hour or so, but yeah, he'll be, he's resilient. He'll be fine. I, I want to say that there was a, the, uh, when, I was, when I was in school, mm-hmm. there was a, a, a guy that I worked with who was a older, he had his doctorate in information systems and uh, geographic information systems. And this guy was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and he would ride his bike all around the city documenting where these series of stairs were located in the, the greater Pittsburgh area. Right. Yeah, I'm, I actually remember this. Not so much the guy, but the story. Yeah. Yes. His name is, uh, I believe it's Dr. Bob Regan. I had the pleasure of working with this guy for about two years. He is fantastic. And one day I'm outside and he just had, uh, he always had his pipe on mm. him all the time. And when I, I asked him, I'm like, how did you... I mean, I was curious. Right. How did you get started smoking pipe? Yeah. And he said that when he went to the doctor, he went to a doctor in the 60s or the 70s. Okay, perfect. And said to them, I, I'm in school. I'm under intense stress and pressure. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm anxious about all of this. Mm-hmm. What is your medical recommendation? <laughs> the doctor prescribed smoking a tobacco pipe. Yeah, we're not talking anything crazy here. Any any kind of like bong hits off a pipe. We're just talking like a right, regular right. tobacco just, pipe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he looked at me dead serious and said, I've never had any reason to doubt that doctor ever <laughs> in my life. I'm like, you are a genius man. Yep. Product of the oh, 60s. This is why you have a PhD. His name was Jerry Sales, actually. Ah. Uh, God. It all comes together. Uh, if Sean's side story about a man who rode his bicycle around the city looking for steps sounds weird, you might want to just kind of look that up a little bit. There's actually a lot more to it. It just sounds kind of odd out of context that way, but yeah. 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 Personal stories, I'm not great with them. Yeah, it's all right. It's good. We'll, uh, we'll tease the listeners. I don't think they've made a cartoon out of uh, steps in the city of Pittsburgh yet, but uh, oh, that's, that's if the, they do, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm working on. If they do, we'll be right there. Man, do you want to, oh boy, I don't even know where to start with these guys. Do you want to dig into the minor the only characters that we really see ever which is just super president and jerry well i want to i want to ask before we really get into this Mm -hmm. from the name alone did you have an impression (laughs) going into this show and was it met my only impression was okay so the title is super president i had no clue what it was about i didn't even know what it looked like animation style anything i just thought it was a president with superpowers and yes that was met so i was happy Okay. Beyond that, no idea. What about you? I really thought that it was going to be Superman-esque powers okay. mapped onto the leader of the free world. So and just because, like a cut and paste? Right. Yeah. Just a straight copy-paste. Yeah. Uh, control or open Apple C, mm-hmm. open Apple V. Mm-hmm. I thought that that's what the show was going to be about. What's the shortcut and, on, a, um, on an iPhone or something? You just hold it down? You just hold it down. Yeah, we don't really have a short shorthand for that yet, so that was awkward. So, or a... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to I see how awkward I, I could make that yeah, moment. No, no, you can make it awkward. I did you can make it awkward. Good. <laughs> it did very you Okay, did so you were looking for well. Superman as president. Superman as president, right. and because I didn't have an idea from the name when this cartoon aired. Right. I thought that it was going to be the president fighting the Russians. I really thought that this was going to be some Red Scare Cold War propaganda yeah. cartoon. I mean, it easily could have to show our supremacy. Yeah. Yeah. 
against I, anything, anything other than what we got. Because like we said, we couldn't even tell from the, the show that it was supposed to be in America. Right. Everything it, was changed just enough that you're like, is this future America? Is this just like an island nation? What? Where, where are we? When are we? Well, yeah. When are we? There's no, it didn't, yeah, there's no anchor for any it of doesn't, that. It, yeah, there, it, doesn't, it, it's not, it doesn't feel like you're given that context. Yeah. And we were also talking and, offline, too, that we thought that maybe Super President was just like an elected president from among other presidents. So he was the best president, therefore the Super President. We had no yeah. clue. No idea. That makes sense, too. I still I think wanna, it's not even like... Well, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I no, was okay. going to say that I don't think the show, from my impression, met my expectations. It surpassed them. Oh, there it, it is. It flew with a rocket-powered belt above and beyond what I thought this show was going to be I about. mean, to, and to be fair, I agree with you. Because, look, I did not know we were going to talk about midget translators. I did not know <laughs> there were going to be Arabian-controlled locust Dave. swarms. Dave, they prefer to be called short person <laughs> locators. Little people trans. God, just short uh, people. We'll edit it out. I'm uh. just speaking in the in the text and dialogue of Super President, <laughs> who is very welcoming to all. Yes, very welcoming to all. The, yes. Yeah, this show was completely bonkers. So having very low expectations to begin with, and little knowledge of what the hell was we were getting into, this was pretty amazing. It's like a weird mashup of a Superman. With like kind of an attempt at a political thriller in each episode. Uh, well, yeah, I want to say it was Superman with some with half of the Wonder Power or the Wonder <laughs> Twins powers. Yeah, exactly. So not Superman's where, powers at all. Yeah, it was like Superman in terms of body type, uh, yes. regality and status. Yeah, and one-liners and sort of save the day attitude. I agree. Yes. Yeah. Other than that, it and was then, more like a Johnny Quest kind of thing. It was very, the villains were very broadly drawn, and they always had these kind of like, uh, they either had machines, or they had creatures, or they had something, and then he had to go kind of just smash them up using either some sort of technology or just his own powers, but yeah. And the, the Wonder Twins powers yes. that he has are fantastic. They, I mean, I, I, thinking about it, if you had the ability with like a little... A diagram of a molecule on your chest make that little sucker spin and then you could turn into any of the elements or any molecule or any combination of the elements oh, it's actually done. pretty fantastic it could go awry in a number of ways but it's actually a pretty fantastic power he kind of uses the same few over and over and over again and and we read a review online um one of the very few that i found that had actually like watched this show other than us who made the point that his powers are kind of used defensively. He doesn't really go on the offense all that much. He, so like he changes into granite anytime somebody's trying to hit him with a flamethrower. He right. changes into steel anytime somebody's trying to shoot him or, or you know, shoot him with bow and arrows or bullets or whatever. So it's very just defensive. So he uses his abilities in ways just to not get hurt or to not get killed. <laughs> and then he, he kind of just wins the day with a good old-fashioned American sock on the jaw. So he just knocks people out left and right. But I found that interesting that he just used them defensively and then just punched people. And that was how he <laughs> kind of saved the day. Uh, I, I think for the simple fact yeah. that he's able to turn into such a wide assortment yeah. of molecules and, and, and stones. And, and, <laughs> and liquids of various whatevers. M- molecular, like molecular composition yeah. of, of gas and, and, and steam. That blows my mind because... I'm going to say this right now. Mm -hmm. As your upcoming super president, Mm -hmm. I'm probably just going to pick one and turn into that all the time. He's going to be like really good at one rather than kind of okay with a bunch of them. I'm going to become a master of turning into granite. I think that's fine. I think that's good. I think I'm good with that That one. It's kind of like a catch-all. You know, it can really help with it. You need to sink to the bottom of the ocean to just do some like exploration or excavation. You're good. Just granite Or if I just... Or if I just want to go to the bottom of the ocean just to think for a little while. Yeah, just to be you know? alone with your thoughts. I mean, gonna... as super president, man, your, your attention is going to be just drawn from all sorts of angles. So you'd, sometimes you just need that. It's, it can be very stressful. And guess what? If you uh, just turn into nitrogen, you won't get the bends. Because <laughs> you're all nitrogen, so you'll be fine. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Yeah. That's, actually, that's actually probably, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Uh-huh. You are going to be my Jerry Sales. I was Sales. just going to ask if it could be. You are going to be <laughs> my be Jerry Sales. I'll be your chemical advisor. <laughs> <laughs> just, not for like 
biological weapons of war hair, just like what you should turn into next and not get yourself killed. <laughs> yeah. And then rescue That's me from cool. vultures. Uh, you are going to have to swallow a midget translator at some point. Oh, well, I knew that was going to be part of the gig no matter what. Uh, I can't believe that that was one of the first things on this show that they had me at Midget Translator (laughs) it had nothing to do with the episode it just came out of left field (laughs) oh I I had to pause the episode because I was I was so so are are we I mean do we so we've kind of talked a little bit about Jerry Sales yeah, do I think we, it's better. Do we, as do like we, a, let's yeah. do we want to jump into the episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an episodic discussion, okay. I think it, it it helps to like paint the character of Jerry more as he's actually involved with these schemes. And, I yeah. I agree. Yeah, and we should say that we're gonna kind of go through. We're not gonna go episode by episode, but just to give you an idea of what some of these names were. So we watched a few, just a smattering of different episodes. You've got the Great Vegetable Disintegrator. You've got Day of the Locusts. <laughs> uh, Man of Steel was pretty good. Had nothing to do with Superman, so that was pretty funny. Um, Monster of the Atoll and the Condor's Eye. Yes. So that's the ones that we watch for the most part today. All completely insane. So I, I want to say the best part about this. So if you were to break this down into, mm-hmm. into two components, one was premise and execution. Okay. How would you rate the premise and the execution of this cartoon? Uh, so not the plots within the cartoon, but the cartoon itself? Yeah, yeah. It's just the, the premise of the cartoon and then the, the execution of whether or not they, they, they were able to accomplish successfully that, that premise. Okay, so premise, you've got a president who's super powered and he deals with threats to the free world, right? Right. Is that what you'd say? Right. That I think sure. they handled pretty well, because um, the premise came across. I, I think in, the, in each episode, it's you know he's always in his little office and he's always got some kind of like world threat that's coming across. So that comes across pretty well. The execution was completely just nuts though, because the <laughs> plans that come, that these villains come up with, and the way that they're resolved are just like what what is happening? They don't make any sense whatsoever. Even from like one beat to the next, I had to rewind a number of these villains' like monologues because they jumped so many different places. They're like, "We've got this machine that does this thing, but then we need money for this other thing that you're using, so we can put yep. money towards the machine that we're using." I'm like, "Well, hold on a second. Wait, which which thing are we doing here?" I was already lost, and by that point, it didn't matter. Super President showed up. They hit him with a flamethrower. Everything's gravy. Yep. Uh, I want to say <clears throat> flawless premise. Okay. Superb execution. Superb execution. <laughs> Superb okay. execution. I know you're giving this, giving this the thumbs up. I would say the execution <laughs> was a little lacking, but that's just that's just for me. It definitely did go no. crazy. What was your out of the ones we watched? We we have a number of antagonists, and the nice thing was that I don't think we really repeated any. There were a couple only, that looked we similar. Only, only one. We yeah, only one. repeated was that one. Professor DeCorto. Uh, DeCorto, yes. Yeah, Professor, Professor DeCorto. DeCorto. Which how? Just describe him. Just try to describe him because I can't, for the life of me, figure out what he's supposed to be. He's like a a background villain from the Herculoids. Yeah, with like the weird, super dark around the eyes, not just eyebrows, but all connected together, like almost like a bat is on his face. I can't figure <laughs> out what that design is, but they use it for all these antagonists. Yeah, it it was uh, like maybe either like a Herculoids character yeah. or maybe a Thundar. Maybe that's what it is. A Thundar. You think it's uh, a Hanna Barbera wizard, ripoff wizard. kind of thing? He, he, well, I mean, not a ripoff because well, Hanna Barbera yeah. hadn't really done, had done that cartoon yet. Right. But I want to say a lot of the, what I would envision the, the sorceresses or the sorcerers right. in Thundar, what they looked like for super science. Like this guy looked like he had sat in a makeup trailer <laughs> and had just said, uh, how much eyeshadow can you guys give me today? And have? they were like, a lot, a lot. We can give you a lot of eyeshadow right now. And he's like, perfect. Let's do it. This is he also. Of, I don't know what happened to his voice from one episode to the other, but he sounds more like a robot in one of the episodes yeah. than the other. And I don't know what happened there. I don't know if they just switched people or what it was. But as far as I know, he's not yeah. a robot. So I mean, so Decorda was the only repeat yes. offender that we had, All right. and he was the. I, he so he comes across in the first episode, <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. Which is amazing. this is the great vegetable disintegrator. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> and this this episode was fantastic for the simple fact that it had the president yep. negotiating a contract <laughs> yeah. with a with presumably a government contracting company uh, that was attempting to do a was it a Mars space shot? Yeah, it was space basically shot? like a yeah. They called it the space shot. So I would imagine Mars it was just space like a flyby shot kind of thing. Yeah, Mars space shot. So they billion were, dollar project. Yep. Yeah. Was it a million or a billion? No, a billion with a B. Big B. It's a billion with a B. Sixes, That's yeah. what I thought. Yep. Billion, billion dollar contract that they are trying to to clinch, and the president is stressing and negotiating over this, which is amazing because in order to, I I, I don't I don't know if people are aware mm-hmm. of how government contracting works. Wait, you mean the president doesn't negotiate all contracts? Never. Oh, interesting. <laughs> there there are specific companies <laughs> that are set up that handle all of that for the government because it's such a, it's such an, a labor-intensive process to do all these things. But you know who could handle that? If, if anybody could handle it, do you know who could? Uh, me as your next super, super president. president. Exactly, exactly. Yes. You got it. You just want some voters over, buddy. Just You're going to negotiate all billion-dollar space shots from now on. Billion dollar space but, shot you know, program, might, guys. I mean, maybe there's a better way, a better place for that money to go. Or do you think that money should be better spent, <laughs> according to Professor DeCorto? <laughs> uh, I do not understand. Be... Maybe you can walk me through the logic of this. So, okay. Basically, All right, do you want me to? Yeah, let's just, okay, let's roll it back to when Jerry gets kidnapped again for the first time. Do it. This was like the most mundane of kidnappings. <laughs> he basically walks out of the White House. No, that's this is the best. This is my favorite part this about favorite Jerry. Kidnap? Okay. This is this is why you are going to be the best, oh, Jerry. No. Jerry is all chill all the time. <laughs> he is. Under any under any stressful situation, a regular a normal person mm-hmm. would have cracked. Just freak out. Jerry Jerry is like, don't worry, guys. I fucking got He's this. Just, I'm gonna talk my way through it, no matter what it is. I am gonna, gonna wisecrack I, my way through it. I thought. You, okay, I need. Did you need, write down? Do you did you write down any of his wisecracks? His, his wisecracks are golden. I have I, I have I, a couple. Some of them were like unintentional that just cracked me up. But uh, I'm this, sure you have a bunch. But well, the first episode, he gets kidnapped. <clears throat> And it, okay, so like the most mundane way possible, right? So we're talking about all these <laughs> right. things like vultures pick him up and fly him away. A giant steel robot picks him up and carries him away. Yeah. No, this one, there's just he just gets in a car <laughs> thinking it's his driver. And no, it's just this Professor DeCordo and his villainous henchman. And he's just like, oh, hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> I guess I'm not going home right now, am I? And you, you think, this is where I was a little confused too. So earlier in the episode, literally 30 seconds before this moment, why, how does this even come up, the midget translator? How does that even come up? Doesn't it come out it, of left field? Doesn't the president just say something about... Yes. He just says, like, hey, don't forget that we need to test out the midget translator, and you're just like, no, hold it, on it, a it, second. I need, to, <laughs> I need to know what the hell's going on here. Is this the part of the show? Yeah. Well, at the beginning of the episode, uh, Norcross, President Norcross, looks at him and, and kind of says, remember, we also have to check out that secret project that I've been working on. Right. And so they begin to talk about this midget trans <laughs> er, transmitter. I think he says midget and translator, doesn't he? I thought it was midget, because it's not a translator. No, but it's not a midget it's either. A, it's I a, mean, I get what they're saying. <laughs> but. Yeah. It's, so it, is a, it is a small pill-like capsule yes. that <laughs> Jerry ingests that allows uh. his speech to be transferred and read in the mind of President Norcross. Right. Now, think for a minute <laughs> the science and technology that has to go into... Well, he's been working on it for a while, taking, so... Taking somebody's <laughs> vocal pattern <laughs> and over... With, with no cellular or telephony involved... No, no electronics, as far as we know. So, as far as we know, <laughs> fucking magic. Yeah, because it's a fucking, fucking pill. Magic that is involved. Does. See, now I thought because he said that and he kind of explained what it was, I thought Jerry had just, you know, popped into the bathroom, taken the pill, and then he got kidnapped. Because the way he delivers his exposition, he's basically narrating everything that's happening to him as he's being shown around uh, Professor DeCordo's evil lair. Which is what makes Jerry amazing. because yeah, he's just so chill that he wasn't even actually conversing with the president at this point. He's just walking it, walking people through it, just walking through it. 
Well, Dave, in the future, yeah. when you get kidnapped, right. it'll happen because of your position. Right. You are going to be able to have a a non heated rational discussion with your captor. I can't wait for that day because you know that I'm super president and I'm coming to save you. That's bud. true, man. He's got to have like he's got his back, so he knows at the end of the day he's going to be totally fine. So that's yeah, that's pretty chill. I'd be pretty chill. The, the support between these two grown men is amazing <laughs> it's, it's if you thought the dynamic duo had some uh homosexual <laughs> leanings watch super president it just gets it gets more and more pronounced as the episodes go on and it's great i love it they're like best buds till the end um i, I think i think that this episode actually had my favorite jerry zinger which one because i want to talk about decordo and his henchmen too because they had a great little like they had a great little moment because of jerry oh. so go ahead what what's jerry zinger well, the, the Jerry Zinger, where they're, they're showing him around the, yeah. the base, and then they're showing him uh, underneath the base. Right. And this is where all the real fun stuff happens. Right, where all, where all the, the craziness right. and the nonsensical plot twist yes. occurs. And so, or just nonsensical plot to begin just with. Just anything. This, yeah. There's no twist. No, there's, it's just, <laughs> there's no twist. There's just a lot no of weird twist. turns that don't do anything. Yeah. yeah. So, they're, they're showing Jerry around, and they're, they're leading him to this next part of the, the base. And, they, and Jerry just looks and he goes, what is this? The $5 tour? <laughs> Boom! He just, oh! and he just walks out. And then they herd him back in. They're like, no, no, we're not done yet. It's so, Jerry, it's so good. Jerry Sales, who do you think you are, you fat little tub? <laughs> the fact that in 87, $5 tour is an insult. 67. 67. 67, yeah, sorry, yeah. 67. I know, but even more. $5 tour, <clears throat> could, oh, inflation's a I know, inflation's even before the embargoes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, great, the great tour embargoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 1969. 1969. Super President was done in by the great tour embargoes. <laughs> no, he has a great line after that, though, too. So, okay, well, go ahead. I want you to finish that, because how does Decordo No, 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 go on. Go on to the next one. That well, was okay, really so Decordo the... just kind of says, like, no, it's the $1 billion tour. And you're like, oh, wow, okay, they're really up on this a notch. So at this point, Decordo says something about, here's my my vegetable disintegrator whatever it just wipes out plants yeah, it doesn't doesn't make no, any it doesn't sense. make any sense and he's like it it's a billion dollar tour and here's my vegetable disintegrator and i need the billion dollars from the martian space program to like beef it up i guess he says i don't really it didn't make essentially any sense. to fund the project he's trying yeah, he's so, kick-starting so- a vegetable disintegrator <laughs> by kidnapping jerry and asking for martian space money so they the, he is using He's using a, a company called a, Apex. It's like Apex, yeah. Apex Space or Apex Aerospace. I thought Aerospace. they just called it like Apex Company, which is the lamest fucking thing. Which is, yeah, yeah, nobody's, nobody's really thinking too hard no. about this, uh, no. this show. So the Apex is, is what's bidding on this Mars space shot. Right. And nobody has ever heard of this company, but it has been escalated and vetted to the point where Super President is now negotiating the contract yes. and giving his final say exactly. about it. And, and, and that, that's what's amazing. That Everybody's just like, we've never heard of this company before. And they're like, no, nah, it's okay. Pass it up the chain and see if they've heard about it. You <laughs> dumb dumbs. worth a billion dollars. You fucking idiots. You are just giving away. You're writing a check for a billion dollars. And you're just like, you know what? I've never heard of this company. To their credit, the internet doesn't exist. True, and that's so they fair. Can't, they can't really vet they it cannot too easily. Google. Right. Th- this is back in the time when somebody was like, oh, I, I know information, but I'm going to talk to maybe one or two other people, and then I'm going to begin the telephone game. Right. Until I get the super people. president. Yeah. <laughs> Until I get the super president. Thank you. <laughs> I love that, that like, uh, Jerry's just like, this is a harebrained scheme. You wouldn't get one penny out of this out of the president. And then DeCordo's just like, "Oh, I think he'll give me more than one penny. I think he'll give me one hundred billion pennies." And I was just like, "Okay, he's still just asking for a billion dollars." But thanks for the yeah. thanks for the math check. Here is where Jerry killed me for the second time this episode. So they're going back and forth and all this stuff. Yes. And he just goes, he just goes, "Hey, anybody mind if I take my pill?" Yes. <laughs> So you realize at this point, he hasn't taken his translator pill. So this entire conversation, <laughs> Super President is not fucking aware of. He has no clue what's going on, even though Jerry's been talking the entire time. So this is when I love the little like side moment between DeCordo and his henchman. 
Because yes. this is yeah. this is beautiful. His henchman just kind of like side eyes him. He looks over. He's standing next to the cordo, and he's just like, "We got this guy kidnapped here, and we're holding him for ransom." And he's just worried about taking his pill. It's just like such a snide little like side comment to this. I loved it though. I just love that little comment between those two guys. I think I think the amazing <laughs> thing is is the the fact that Decordo and his henchmen don't understand that if you if you've kidnapped somebody mm-hmm. and you are you are a captor and for some reason you have gone down this path of kidnapping somebody right. but let's say they have a dependency on a certain medication right. we've seen this in hollywood time and time again where somebody's like i got to get these pills got to get this medicine for this person yeah, yeah. exactly and it's it's crazy to think like was this the genesis of that idea? In I highly film? doubt it. I hope like, not. Was, did Jerry set the trend? Because <laughs> I want Sales. Jerry Sales to have set the trend. Well, if he did, then it was a missed opportunity because Decorda is just sitting there, like, yeah, go ahead and take your pill, whatever. Just get, make yourself comfortable. We'll be fine. He didn't use it as like to try to prevent him from, you know, he didn't use it as a bargaining chip. He's just like, yeah, go ahead and take your pill. I'm sure it's totally fine. It's not a midget translator or anything. The best part about this entire interaction yeah. is that. While Decordo and his henchmen, while his goon, his goon. Are, are having this conversation, there is a quick cut to Jerry throwing the pill into his mouth. Yes. <laughs> and then it just cuts right back. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but he's just like, so, I, the, so this is the second time that that pill has been thrown <laughs> in an awkward fashion because the episode begins with Norcross giving Jerry the pill, but he just goes, catch, yeah. and throws him the <laughs> vial <rips> it out. <laughs> with this quote-unquote secret pill right. that's like secret project in it. He has zero regard for his, like, <laughs> for I, I want to say. And, and uh, tax dollars. I hope you as super president are more conscientious of people's super tax dollars. I am going to be super conscientious. Okay, Don't you worry. Good. There has to, I want there to almost be a cut because I I guarantee that Norcross nor Jerry Sales worked on this midget translator pill. There have, I wanted a cut to the, the group of scientists. Exactly. (laughs) That are doing just with their, like their head in their hands, just shaking their head. Like, Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like (laughs) we, this technology doesn't exist and they are throwing right. it around th- in the Oval Office. <laughs> throwing it around. And they do have they, scientists too, which we find out in a later episode. Because uh, oh, the super boy. president just kind of like, he's like, oh, don't worry, the scientists will take care of it. And he's, <laughs> oh, you got scientists. Okay. <laughs> oh, the nerds down the hall got <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Once we don't let them out. Don't worry. Yeah, they'll take care of it. Point. Poindexter over here is going to put it all together. I'm super president. Man, I would love it if they had like an actual just nerdy scientist next to him and super president just like chucked him on the shoulder and just like sent the guy flying. I would love that buddy comedy. Oh, you mean murdered him? Yeah, just murdered him. They got a whole team of scientists. Just rotate through him. It's fine. But I, I will say. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. That that did lead me. The, the, the murder comment led me towards this path <laughs> of, of thinking. Okay. I don't know that necessarily Super President is the right title. Ooh, what's a good for this show? It could have been Super Renegade. Yeah, because let's be honest, he does everything either by himself or with the assistance of Jerry. And that's one of the to to build on that point for a brief second. That's really interesting because he's not he wasn't elected to be a Super President. He was elected President and then moonlights as a superhero. So like the military doesn't know that super president is actually super president of the United States of America. He is not in league with anybody else except Jerry. Now people know him right. as super president, but he's not, he's not and working they, in concert with and, his forces. Oh my yet. God. Oh my God. This is, <laughs> and they are not trying to cover up the fact no. that he is. No. That Jerry continues to <laughs> just say, hang out with them too. Just Jerry continues to not say super president. He continues to say Jim. his full fucking just name. Calls him Jim. Jimmy, Calls him Jim he's also all the fucking here, time. How about the fact, like, oh man, I always see you and uh, President Norcross hanging out, Jerry. And then the only time I don't see you hanging out with President Norcross is when you're hanging out with Super President. I just find that strange that you don't have any more friends than those two guys. You know, it's just like one of those things where you you see Superman, but you never see Clark Kent. That same kind of thing. It's just ridiculous. Right. Ridiculous. It's it's amazing. But it's fun. That's fun. And actually, one of the most you had another point though, didn't you? Super Renegade. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> or just super renegade or just super murderer. Super murderer. Yeah, super serial <laughs> killer would be also fun. Because <laughs> yeah. there are just many, there are many moments in this show where something happens and then it cuts to like a still of villains or goons or henchmen <laughs> kind of tied up or huddled together. And you're like, wait, are they dead? <laughs> yeah, or just smashed like, under a he... giant slab of rock or something. Yeah, did, did he kill them? Just murder like, them all. If, I, I, don't, I don't want to speak for everybody because as super president, I would not be affected by this. Right. But if I was to push a heavy stone slab mm-hmm. on a human being, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume you're dead. Probably dead. Yep. But also, as your super president, I vow not to do that. Yeah, well, thank you. Often. You should also put that on some propaganda. I, v- I vow not to do that often. often. That's my caveat, Perfect. is the often. That is well played. We've trained you well. Actually, <sighs> in this episode, too, we'll get to some of the other ones here in a second, but this one, since it was the first one we watched, it also is the first appearance of the Omnicar, <laughs> which blew my mind. Okay, so we've got the presidential mansion, which is somehow on the coast and it's somehow like a mashup of the white house with the washington monument i don't quite know how that was all working together but yeah that's what's that's what was very confusing because i think it's in episode seven ufo Mm -hmm. uh where they do like a long cut of the exterior of the presidential quote-unquote mansion and the the, i I don't know if people are familiar with the top of the washington monument Mm -hmm. but it it has like a pyramid yep. on the top of it. Uh, so it, it's a triangle, like four sides of a triangle folded into each other to create a tip. An equilateral see- triangle for the Thank you. geometrically minded. Yes. For the math minded folks yes. who are listening to this. Mm-hmm. So this equilateral triangle that's on there is just not on top of the Washington Monument, which I, I, I being from this area, the Washington Monument and the White House are relatively close, but they the Washington Monument is not located behind the the White House. It's actually south of the White House. So, and so the So there's like no way that you could look at the White House and see the Washington Monument behind it? No. Okay. Also I need to say not equilateral triangle. I'm a fucking idiot. It's actually just known as a quadra like a quadrilateral or a square pyramid, I guess it would be. I, I would oh have accepted God. whatever I would have accepted whatever you said. Uh, I feel so dumb. I, look, as my advisor, Jerry <laughs> to up. I would have accepted anything you would have said. I'm your I trust advisor, you not that your much. Geometry advisor, I apologize. Don't turn into a dodecahedron. <laughs> Can't get you back. So it was it was back there. I, I, the thing that I was curious about yeah. Was that if they were trying to link two, two titular, like not titular, but like if they Just were trying iconic, to put, yeah, DC, uh, yeah, iconic DC, yeah. yes. Why would they have stopped at just the two? I, don't know. I mean, just match them all the, together. Do, just put the dome of the Capitol building. Just sit on Lincoln's lap. Have your office just, just Lincoln, like right in his lap. Lincoln outside next to like an outdoor carport, yeah. like just. A flag humping a bald eagle? Like, I don't know. Everything. But, like, that seems awesome. Yeah, do it. Super president. But this, uh. okay, so we've got the presidential mansion. He drops through, like, a secret elevator that goes into the basement of this thing. And he just zips out in his Omni car that looks like a UFO, basically. Uh, he just zzz, whoop, just zips right out of there. So you would think if anybody just happened to be walking by and they see the Omni car just shoot out of the White House, maybe there's some <laughs> crazy shit going on. It would immediately be like, "What the fuck is that? <laughs> that spaceship? What is what is that spaceship? Oh, it's just a Martian. Did an uh, alien? Sky shot. It's fine. It's a space shot. <laughs> Did a UFO just come out of the presidential mansion? <laughs> oh wait, it's a super president. Oh, super president. That's totally Got it. Fun. So that's the first time you see that. We see it multiple times throughout the rest of the episodes. Everybody can steal this thing. Anybody can fly this thing. You can be, uh, you know, a mutant. You can be one of the, you can be Professor DeCordo. You can be a giant steel robot with no hands and still fly this thing around. (laughs) That might have been my favorite, my favorite moment. Uh, Let's, I want, I want to know your favorite uh, antagonist. Then we can talk about that and that episode for a couple seconds. Um... I was a little bit concerned Uh-oh. about how some of the, I, 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 I will say this, yep. in episode four, mm-hmm. you are introduced to a villain that's named Hasim al-Butani, yeah. who is of Middle Eastern descent, oh, is he? and I, 
I, I mean, I would, ass- I would assume oh, as much. I mean, it was just one of those like. Oh, you were fucking with yes, me. Yes, I was because this uh, is like the super racist. We don't even care. Super stereotypical. Right. Yeah. There was a moment where I was like, "How are they going to handle this? And am I going to be uncomfortable?" Mm-hmm. Were you? No. Yeah, I wasn't either. It was fine. I, I mean, they it's not great, it, but I think it was. They, fine. I mean, they they did they did it. They they with their artwork. They created a stereotypical vis- yes. or, uh, villain, yeah. stereotypical villain, but they did not imbue the character with stereotypical language or thoughts or values or beliefs. It was just a villain. Just a villain. And that's what I like. Right. That's what I liked about this. It was just a fucking villain out to do villainous shit, and that's what I wanted to see. That's what was good about and this. And in this one, he basically was controlling uh, swarms of locusts to just devour right. crops and plant life. And I love uh, Super President had a great, well, it was actually when it was Norcross. He had a great line when they're like going out to investigate. And he just, so they're watching these swarms kind of go across from city to city, field yeah. to field. And he's just like, come on, Jerry, I want to be there when these locusts arrive. And I don't know, just, just his delivery <laughs> of it was amazing. Because I would yeah. pay to hear my Super President say that. Amazing. Well, I I think to your to answer your question, yeah. I think episode nine, Man of Steel, had yes. my favorite villain. Okay, then we're on the same page. So. We're on the same page. Do you want to talk about this villain? Yeah, we can talk about Steel Man. Yeah. From the episode Man of Steel. Man of Steel. <laughs> it's just it was such a direct. Let's talk about this guy because do we think it's a guy in a suit? Do we think it's just a mutant made of steel? Do we think it's a robot that's like sentient? I, I think it's a sentient robot. You think it's a sentient robot? Okay. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a guy in a suit because uh, you never see him. And because his, his face moves in a way that has emotions. <laughs> yes. Usually He's anger emotive. and confusion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no, and there was, a, there was one still where he has like a weird smug satisfaction. <laughs> yes. Like satisfied face uh, that he's like, mm, I know what I did is wrong mm, and I'm cool with I'm it. Totally I was like, that it. is... That's great. Oh. That's fantastic. There are so many like weird things that happen in this episode that just they don't make any sense. Was he was Steel Man? Was he trying to break into like a weapons facility first? I kind of missed he was, that. He, yes, he was trying to. He was on the warpath to steal the molecular disintegrator. Of course, as you do. Which honestly, I, if you'd use it against anybody, you'd probably use it against Super President. So sure, that makes sense. I this episode had my favorite chase animation. Okay. <laughs> Where it, the, there are moments where Jerry and Super President are running. Yes. Oh, and it God. looks, running, it looks is very, a, running is a very generous <laughs> descriptor for this. Oh, it, looked like, it looked like bad animation from a Scooby Doo episode. Where they just slide them across the screen. <laughs> yeah. And their legs kind of they're twitch. Like, they, wrote, they like rotoscope them. <laughs> like, they're like, it's just, their legs are it's literally great. just like twitching. Like their legs are kicking while they're trying to sleep. And then they just kind of like move across the screen. It's, it's so janky. So, but for our giant steel uh, antagonist robot, yes. when he is running across the screen, he's almost doing like a can can. Yeah, he's doing a weird kind of like high kick. He's, march he's, he's <laughs> his legs are moving, but his his if you were to if you were to hold if you had your arms at like resting by your side and you pulled your arms straight out and then you bent them at the elbow. Yeah downwards towards the bottom of your body in an equilateral and then triangle as you, yes yeah, yes <laughs> and then I, that's more of a right triangle oh, okay, I got you. and so you're really not doing no, well triangles, i'll stick so. the chemical please <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to every step you took if you raised your shoulders with this weird <laughs> downward facing right triangle arm yeah. that's how this robot walked and it was beautiful. Yeah. I love, if, I love every moment of it. If anyone out there can find that clip and put it to the music of Moulin Rouge, uh, I will love you forever. Or just Yakety Sax. Yakety Sax would be <laughs> fine. Benny Hill music is totally fine, too. Um, did you get... Okay, so during this scene, <laughs> basically, okay, Steel Man, he tried to steal the weapon. Jerry, for some reason, was there on the lookout for him, even though Super President wasn't there. So, of course, Jerry right. gets kidnapped by Steel Man. The, the weirdest, so Jerry has a, a moment, his midget translator's gone, but the steel man actually lets Jerry talk to Super President, right? So right, right. He, gets, he gets basically to say one line, and he says something about, tell Uncle Hardy that I'm okay, or something like that. 
Yeah. At which point, so Steel Man cuts him off, and then Super President's like, hmm, Jerry was trying to tell me something. And it goes through this convoluted path of illogical thoughts where he's just like, Uncle Hardy. He's like, Laurel, Laurel and Hardy? Hardy? There is a Laurel point. I bet you that's where they are. <laughs> so it just leads up to this random point, this geographic point. where he. They have such <sighs> a tight bond. They have such a strong understanding of each other. Dave, that's what I'm looking for in my journey. Buddy, if I get kidnapped by a giant steel robot and he gives me like three seconds to tell you where I am, I'm going to say, I'm at Laurel Point. Please hurry. (laughs) (laughs) I will not try a Laurel and Hardy reference. But then you ruin ruin the element of surprise that he has. Well, guess what? Because he ruined it for for Super President because Super President, he's like, oh, I've never seen these ironworks before. Let me just walk right in this fucking thing. And then, (laughs) then Steel Man lays a trap for him which every yeah. villain lays the same trap. For whatever reason, they all think that if they just trap Super President in basically a box that will compress or otherwise not let him escape, that they can kill him. Uh, it never works. Spoiler alert, never works. Did you catch his reference? It didn't even, like, his, his reasoning behind this steel trap it didn't even make sense. Oh, it was the idea that no gas could escape. Yeah, he's like, it's a new special metal that only I have discovered, and once it starts spinning right once it starts spinning it'll heat up so that not even gas can escape to which super president says well then bullshit bullshit what's he do instead he well he he says that if 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 air or if oxygen can't escape from this then i'll just turn into acid fuck you i'm gonna turn into acid (laughs) fuck you melt my way through this thing (laughs) which was great i'm surprised so super president his his emblem on his chest is like a it's it's like a molecule, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a an rep- atom or a it's, molecule. It's like a textbook. Yes, just a, it's like a textbook of, recommend. Right, right. Yeah, of like an atom or a molecule. Yeah, with like an electron it, spinning around its orbit. Yeah. Yes, it really should have just been a middle just finger. Just right, right to you. Just a big middle yep. finger. That just any any moment that he was in any trouble, he's just like, yeah, fuck you. I'm gonna turn into acid. Yep. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw myself in your I'm face. Through you shit. Well, that's the thing though. It's defensive, right? So he uses right. it in a way to get himself out of trouble. But he doesn't just turn into acid and then go give Steel Man a big old hug. He just like lets him go, basically. And this, with with Steel Man's run, I have a note here that he was limp wristed because he has like these <laughs> weird flanges on the end of his wrist that just kind of dawdle around <laughs> as he's running doing the can can. But there was a great kind of it wasn't a non sequitur. It was just a great uh editing job and by that i mean terrible because steel man is running <laughs> and they're chasing him and he's like you don't think super president will mind if i steal the omni car it cuts right to jerry <laughs> standing next to super president and he just pauses for a moment he goes he stole the omni car <laughs> such a great <laughs> delivery <laughs> almost <sighs> deadpan that killed me absolutely oh, killed me god he stole the omni car so that was, a, that was a fun scene, too, with Steel Man riding around in the Omnicar. And uh, basically, this is when we get to see Super President channel his uh, electrical powers to power this electromagnet that, yes, right. lured Steel Man back in and, and kept him in place. If he, if he would have said, I'm going to turn into Sean's seventh grade science fair project, yeah. I would have been like, yeah, electromagnet. Yeah, got it. it. It's perfect. Blue perfect. Ribbon. I got, I got first place for that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I loved his, he, he almost had like a, it was almost like an O face, but it was somewhere between like an O <laughs> face and like taking a really painful shit because when he, he's trying to like turn into electricity, but he, he says, I have to turn into three times the strength of my normal electricity, which I don't know what the hell that means, but it looks like he's just trying to take like a really hard crap and it's just really <laughs> bad animation. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how, but we're almost at our hour already. So any any quick quips from any of the other episodes you want to drop? Any Jerry lines? Any any anything? Uh, the only the only thing that I think that I didn't get a chance to talk about was in episode seven. Mm-hmm. Uh what was the name of that it? The, the UFO, UFO mystery. The UFO mystery. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> in this episode, you find out that the Omnicar has the ability to shoot some type of a laser from the front yeah, of the car. Sure. And the thing that's interesting to note is that if you, if you stop and you pause it, because it happens very quickly, but it looks like a rainbow. It looks what? like the Omni car. I swear, I that. I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It looks like the Omni car shoots gay pride <laughs> 
out of the front of it. And I was like, this is a progressive <laughs> and president. our nation's towns with it. This is a wonderfully progressive president. As your super president, I will shoot gay pride out of my car. Can you use it to restore our nation's towns rather than destroy them, though? Uh, I'm gonna. I no promises. Work on that. Gonna, get, get your gonna, team of scientists together to work on it. <laughs> get back in the lab, Poindexter. <laughs> Stop murdering your scientists. <laughs> Which brings me to. Evil lab. Uh, brings me to um, one point I want to mention in the monster of the atoll or atoll. This is where we get to see another recurring villain. We didn't get to see him more than once, but throughout the episodes, um, the witch doctor does recur a number of times. So. This witch doctor basically just conjures up this monster and sends him on a rampage, whatever. There is a tribal chief who is actually not really buddies with the witch doctor, and he's kind of resisting his control. Right. Well, do, do you know what an atoll is? Isn't it just like a group of islands? Yeah, it's just a, it's a ring-shaped yeah, around reef a, island. Yeah, uh, around a volcano, right? A dormant extinct volcano. I think it's just I, I think it's just it's a it, it's formed by coral yeah but I think it's in the the reason that it's in a ring like that is because it was a a is it, it was a volcano okay. and then it kind of gets eroded but the coral grows oh. up so that's actually above the surface of the ocean and I learned something today yeah look at that atolls geographical so, formations with Saturday morning <laughs> cartoons so you ha- you, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you no, had no. this witch doctor. Yeah, so there's a witch doctor, but there's also the tribal chief, which they don't really see eye to eye, but the tribal chief has a great line where he just says, the white man have always been friends of ours. Oh, my like, God. Oh, this super kill- president, I- you're so cute. You tried <laughs> I so shook hard. my head. <laughs> I tried so hard. Well, did you, did you hear what the... Uh, oh. So you are correct mm-hmm. that the witch doctor and the tribal president did not meet eye to eye. Nope. Did you hear what the witch doctor's response to that was? He said something about like, well, you may be the tribal. Well, I, I have you it gotta, written okay, down. You gotta, go ahead. He said, so do, do your line. The white man have always been our friends. They keep us from our true destiny. <laughs> yeah. Shots fucking fired. Yeah, right across the bow. Jesus. Mm. Uh, I'm going to say... I have never felt more uncomfortable on that one. <laughs> watching okay. a the witch doctor one. <laughs> it's fine because at the end of the day, the scientists are called in to tranquilize the monster. Everything's totally fine. <laughs> what a way to end an episode! Oh my god. Speaking of ending an episode, uh, do you recommend? I what I I absolutely one hundred percent non ironically recommend that you watch Super President and then vote for me this 2016 as your Super President. I cannot wait to work on your campaign over the next year and a half. It's going to be amazing. Get ready for it's it. It's going to be amazing. Um, I, you know what? I was on the fence earlier. I think after this discussion, yeah, I'm with you. Did I win you I over? You yes! Because it's yes! just a lot of fun. It's, it's way more innocent than it has any right to be, even though they do make a lot of, you know, kind of social gaffes and stuff like that, but... It's just fun. It's stupid. It's so, so, so obscure that probably no one you're, you're going to talk to has ever seen it. So check it out. I mean, you can find the stuff on YouTube. I don't know if you can find all the episodes there, but we found a, a fair few. And it definitely gives you a taste. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. Just a lot of wacky 1960s fun. So yeah. And, and no episode goes beyond six and a half minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a nice little just dip right into it and then hop right back out. It's real yep. nice. It's real nice. I think that's it for Super President. Do you have uh, anything coming up you want to let the listeners know about? Uh, I do. Nice. If you are in the D.C. area and you are into improv comedy, uh, you should come out and see me in the month of June. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a, a series of shows for a Wit Road show. So I'm going to be performing most Saturdays. It'll be Saturday the 6th, June 6th, the 13th, the 20th, and well, maybe not the 27th. Um, but it'll be those three days, or I'm sorry, it'll be the 6th, the 13th, the 20th, and the 26th. Uh, the Saturday shows on the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th are all at 7.30. The show on the 26th is going to be at 7.30 and 10 o'clock, double header. Ooh. Yeah. Double feature, I like it. So that'll be, that's what's exciting. Uh, that, and on uh, June 23rd, if anybody wants to come over and play uh, Batman Arkham Knight with me, you are more than welcome to, because that's all I'm going to be doing that day. <laughs> Excellent. Now we know where you're going to be I, for the next month. Yep. So you will see me later. Good times. Uh, as Very for excited. me, as of the writing of, or the recording of this episode, I'm actually back at Collider full time. So yay! yay! Congratulations, Dave. Collider, no more sitting in an office all day, hating my life. 
So yeah, Collider full time. Head on over to Collider.com. Check out my stuff over there. The really the only thing I'm recapping at the moment is Game of Thrones still. So you can come over there and say hi Sunday nights when that posts. Otherwise, I'll just be there full time. So come on over and stop by whenever you'd like. Sean, where can the folks find you on social media if they are so inclined? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sean Paul Ellis. And Dave, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Dr. Claw MD. If you're interested yeah. in finding out more about the show, Saturday Morning Cartoons, you can find us at SaturdayMorningCartoons.com. Remember, that's Morning with a U. You can also find us on Twitter at Morning Tunes. You can check out Sean's handiwork at our Tumblr page, SaturdayMorningCartoons.tumblr.com. Feel free to send us an email, let us know how we're doing, and maybe suggest a show, SaturdayMorningCartoons at gmail.com. You can also download a podcast each and every week through Stitcher and iTunes. We're working on getting uh, across to some more platforms, too. There's a lot of cool uh, new tech that's coming out, so we're trying to get um, trying to get on more platforms to make us uh, more accessible to you guys. With that in mind, we also ask you that you rate and review the show if you're enjoying it, even if you're not. Um, just head on over to iTunes and Stitcher. We have links on our site that will point you to those rate and reviews. Um, they really do help kind of get us on the map so we can get the, the show out to more and more folks. So. Yeah, we'd appreciate it if you could do it. Anything else I left out, Sean? Uh, one final yeah, plug. You if you, I know I mentioned Dr. Bob Regan earlier. Mm -hmm. If you are interested, his book is called The Steps of Pittsburgh, Portrait of a City. It is a meticulously researched and documented article that has fun facts and stories about, uh, including also beautiful photography of the city of Pittsburgh. It's, and you can find it on Amazon.com. Very well done. This entire show has actually just been a plug for that book. It's just been a plug for that book. Yeah, you figure it out. I don't know how it works. Uh, such a cool dude. Yeah. No, that's cool. I actually might look into that again, too, because I remember when that was, that was going on. You, you're, you're welcome to buy one, or you, can have, or you can borrow my signed copy. Ooh, look at you. I know, signed right? Signed copy. I'm going to get my what? I, fingerprints. I didn't work with him for two years for nothing. Oh, so, you, you know. Got your book. Get your book out of it. Hey, uh, you know, June's right around the corner here. What do we have coming up for the listeners? Are we going to do another theme oh, month? Oh, man. We are. We have, uh, we have a theme month coming up for June, which we are both very excited yes. about because, uh, because it's something that Dave enjoys and something that I know nothing it's about, gonna be great. which is we are going to do an entire month about sports cartoons. It's going to be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is exciting. Uh, um, yeah. So it'll be. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to note what uh, the the car, our first sports themed <laughs> cartoon is going to oh, be? Oh, I forget what the order we decided was. I know which ones we're uh, watching, but I forget which. Oh, was it Pro Stars? It's Pro yeah, Stars. Yeah, we're doing Pro Stars first. It is Pro Stars. Yeah. So if you ever in a world where you ever thought to yourself, <laughs> I wish that there would be a pair up between. Bo Jackson, Wayne Gretzky, and Michael Jordan, where they would solve and fight crime, <laughs> Pro Stars is the vehicle for you. Oh, I cannot wait for this. There's some so, other good ones coming up this month, too. I don't want to give too much away yet, but if you guys are into the sports cartoons, or hey, even if you have suggestions, I know there's a lot out there, uh, feel free to let us know. Yeah, good times. Looking forward to that one. All right, man. Uh, so Anything else I, from you? So I... Yeah, I just, uh, as an outro, yeah. um, Dave, as my trusted advisor, oh, no. as my Jerry Sales mm -hmm. to me being super president, mm -hmm. what would be the first legislation that you would advise me to super escalate and super pass through super Congress? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got nothing. Because, up front. <laughs> because, well, I mean, I'm gonna help you yeah, out because we talked, we talked, we talked about it earlier. Oh, it was the, it was the Super Pizza Party Pact of 2016, which I'm looking forward to, which guarantees that all American citizens yes. get free pizza on Fridays. Oh, I thought that was just like what we were doing for your campaign. No, I mean, because I've already is. donated it's a for, like hundred thousand further... dollars to that, so. Right, and you thank you. Is that is my money going generous to the right place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it went right to pizza. It went right to Domino's. Right to pizza party? Oh, good to Domino's <laughs> of all things. <laughs> right to Domino's. Wonderful. It went right so, to the steps of Pittsburgh, a portrait of a city. <laughs> Doctor Regan is very happy. <laughs> with the I would have had to with my campaign contribution. <laughs> and confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, folks, I'm going to leave you with this one. Remember to vote Sean Paul Ellis. And am I on the ticket? You are. As what? Is my super trusted advisor? advisor. Can I be a super, super advisor? advisor?
Whatever title you I want, I want to be supervisor. Supervisor sounds beautiful. Okay. Super President Ellis, Super Advisor Trumbore from Saturday Morning Cartoon. Oh, God. Cartoons 2016. <laughs> so close. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.